Hello, everyone. Thank you for stopping by to see San Fe today. Thank you so very much. People, y'all know what's going on <clears throat> with biting. <laughs> they are trying to impeach Biden. What? They want to get rid of y'all grandpa and chief. They don't like him no more. He's messing up. He's not doing what they told him to do. He's fumbling. He can barely get around. He forget where he's at. And the people of the United States, they see what's going on. In other countries, see what's going on. They're laughing at us. How can the United States be so stupid, so dumb not to see that something is wrong with this man? How can they abuse this? This is senior abuse right here. His whole entire family knows what's up with Joe Biden, but they want that money so bad, they want to be recognized, okay? They want to be popular. They got money, you know. They had money before he became the president. They had a lot of money with Joe Biden's dealings, what he has done in his past and all the crimes that he got away with. So they had money. So why did he have to become the president of the United States? Why did they place that old man in there like that? Why did they do that? Well, we know why. We know. We know exactly why, y'all. Y'all remember, what's his name? John Fetterman. I forgot what state that was when he was running for senator and he had a stroke. He had a stroke and he was trying to recover and he still became the senator. They still voted him in. You know, he's a far left. He's a Democrat. I mean, he way over there to the left, way over there. They voted for this man. They loved him to death. They felt pity on him just because he had a stroke and his mind ain't a hundred percent like Joe Biden's. We still going to vote for him. We don't care. We are going to put him in there. That's why you're having the problems that you're having now, people. Some of y'all, okay. I'm going to say the Democrats, the one who voted for Fetterman and the one who voted for Joe Biden and all the other Democratic lowdown sap suckers. Them too. That's why you're having problems in your life right now. That's why you can barely survive. That's why you're struggling. Because you didn't do your homework on these people. Move right along here. Man, this pissed me off so bad. Now, I want y'all to <clears throat> look at what this dude, I, I want to call him a name, but I don't want to speak ill of people who have problems, you know, medical conditions and illnesses. I don't want to speak ill of him, but he keep it up. I'm just going to have to speak ill of him right here from the Guardian. It says, Democratic Senator dares, he dares the Republicans. We dare you, Lord Lisa, I dare you. I dare you to impeach Biden. You are going to lose, he said. Y'all going to lose. Try to impeach him because the people going to hate y'all. You going to lose. They not going to let this happen. They going to riot. They going to do everything. We are not going to let this happen. Well, he didn't say they were going to riot. I'm just telling you how he's thinking, and what the people like him are thinking, y'all. It says that Pennsylvania John Fetterman says any attempt, any attempt to impeach President Biden would end up hurting the Republican Party. Y'all going to lose some votes. It's going to hurt y'all. Nobody's going to vote for Republicans when it comes time for the 2024 election because y'all... <laughs> Impeach the old C now man. That's going down. Y'all impeach him. Man, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, this is the way they think. This is the way they think. 
It said the Democratic Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman directly dismissed Republicans' move towards impeaching Joe Biden, saying doing so could end up hurting the GOP. So he's trying to scare the Republicans. He's trying to scare. And he's going to scare some of them. He is. It said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, do it. I dare you, Fetterman told reporters on Capitol Hill. If you can find the votes, go ahead because you're going to lose. It's a loser. It will just be like a big circle jerked on the French rice. That's what he's saying. As Donald Trump faces four separate criminal cases, House, Rep House Republicans have floated the impeachment of Biden as they investigate his son Hunter Biden business dealings. Republicans have been unable to sub substantially whatever wrongdoings by either Bidens. What? He said what? They have been unable, basically, what they're trying to say, to prove any wrongdoings by either Biden or his son. They have not proved it. Unable to. Mm. All right. Kevin McCarthy, the Republican speaker, suggested last month the House would pursue impeachment if it did not obtain access to certain documents, even through Republicans. I'm sorry, even though Republicans had never asked for some other documents at issues, according to the Hill. So they try to say the Republicans didn't ask for the document. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's some things on it on TV, on the news and articles and stuff like that where they ask for the documents and they don't want to give the documents. Why do you think they don't want to give the documents, y'all? Why do you think they don't? Because they're guilty. They know what they have done. Okay. They don't want to show the documents. They have asked and asked and asked. So that's a lie within itself. Okay. <laughs> Now, you know what happens if they impeach Joe Biden? We're still going to be worse off with Kamala Harris. Probably even worse. Even though she might become president, Obama's still going to be telling her what to do. And the other Democrats, they're going to be telling her what to do, y'all. Okay. Because the lady is not bright. That's my opinion, okay? Y'all can tell me if you think she's bright or not. That's my opinion. She's not bright. Something is wrong up here with this lady. You can tell. You can tell. Okay. Do you think she can run a country? Do you think other countries are going to listen to her? Do you think they want to listen to a laughing cow? Do you think they want to? No, they're not. They're not going to listen to this lady. They're not going to listen to her. Right here it says... VP Harris ready to take over presidency from Biden, she said. Vice President Kamala Harris said in an interview Wednesday that she's prepared to fulfill her oath and take over the job of being president. If President Biden, Joe Biden, is unable to complete a second term, Biden is currently 80 years old, y'all, and will turn 81 in November. If elected in 2024, Biden would be over 82 years old prior to his second inauguration. Mm, mm, mm. With questions concerning the president's age and health continuing to overshadow the 2024 presidential race, Harris was asked whether she was prepared to step into the role of the president if Biden reached the point where he was unable to carry out his duties as president. He's unable right now, y'all. He's unable. He's been unable. He was unable when he came into office the first day. He was unable. And they knew it. He was unable when he ran for president. And they knew he was unable because he's still doing the same stuff he was doing when he was running for the presidency. The same damn thing. Yes, I said it. Because they're pissing me off. They are pissing me off, y'all. It says right here, in response to the question, Harris, that the prospect of, insists that the prospect of taking over Biden's role as president was merely hypothetical. It would not be necessary. However, she explained that she is prepared to fulfill her oath of office. It will not be necessary. Could she have a point right there? Could she have a point because they're not going to get rid of Joe Biden? Could she have a point? 
They all just going through the motions. Ain't nothing going to happen because we know what happens, you know, when we as Republicans try to do something. Even though the House is mostly Republicans, you know some of those Republicans, the rhinos, is going to vote to keep Joe Biden in. We know this, okay. We can't never succeed. All of us can't never get together. All the Republicans. But the Democrats, y'all, they stick together. You notice that? They stick together in their efforts. But not Republicans. Oh, no. No, no, no. I want you to pay attention right here to what she is saying. Pay close attention. Uh, questions about the president's age often go hand in hand with questions about how you would step in the role, you know, if necessary. Do you feel prepared for that possibility? Uh, as serving as vice president, prepared you for for that job? Yes. And how would you you know, describe the, that that process? Well, first of all, let's. I'm answering your hypothetical, um, but Joe Biden's going to be fine, so that is not going to come to fruition. But let us also understand that every vice president. Every vice president understands that when they take the oath, that they must be very clear about the responsibility they may have to take over the job of being president. I am no different. Well, y'all, let me tell you something. One thing she was right about is that every vice president knows when they are chosen, okay, that if something's going to happen, that the president can no longer fulfill his duties as president and he's gone, or either he dies or he gets impeached or something like that, they know that they are next in line to be the president. Now, I'm going to say this. The Democrats... And the Republicans and the rhinos. Nobody wants Kamala Harris to be president. Not even her own party. They don't want her to be president because they know this lady cannot run a country and countries are gonna be laughing. <laughs> oh Lord, they picked this crazy woman. <laughs> Can you see it, y'all? Can you see it? Why? Why would they impeach Joe Biden? Why? Maybe they don't want to impeach him for a reason just because of this situation right here. They don't want Kamala Harris to be running the United States. Now, Obama, they say he's running it. But I'm going to tell you something about a woman now. A woman ain't going to let you run over her, okay? She ain't going to let you. Now, Kamala Harris, I don't see her being that woman. I don't see her being that woman, okay? Letting somebody run over her and telling her what to do. I don't see that. Because you look at her husband. Look at him. He's under her wings. He's under there. Okay. She got him in a headlock. She got him in a choke. Okay. That man don't say nothing. He don't do nothing. And he better not do nothing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, y'all. I am just saying. Moving right along here. Now, you know what will happen. Okay. There was a war. Could this lady withstand a war? Could she withstand a war, y'all? Could she? Now, a lot of people are mad at Elon Musk right now, y'all. They pissed off at him. They are mad at him. They are so mad at him. I want you to look at this from CNBC.com. Ukraine rips Elon Musk for disrupting sneak attacks on Russian fleet with Starlink cut off. He cut them off. He cut them off, y'all. Ukraine was going to do something to Russia, and he cut them off. They pissed off at that. They said Ukrainian official slammed SpaceX CEO Elon Musk for ordering engineers to shut off Starlink satellite network over crime, Crimea in order to thaw a Ukrainian attack on Russian warship. So Ukraine was going to attack Russian warships. They were going to sneak up on them with Starlink. According to a new biography of Musk, the South African-born billionaire asks, how am I in this war? How am I in this war? Doing an interview with author, whatever his name, Walter somebody, Isaacson. Musk feared that he would be supporting a mini Pearl Harbor 
that could have led to a nuclear war according to the book. That's what he said. He got this book coming out. I think it's next Tuesday or something like that. So they feared off. They mad about this book. Ukraine is mad. Zelensky is mad. They want to do something to you. Elon Musk. He better watch out too. You know they hate Trump. They want to get rid of him. He just might. They, they just might want to get rid of Elon. It says, in the early days of Russian unprovoked invasion of Ukraine, as Western government worked to supply Kyiv with artillery and air defense systems, the first of Musk Starlink's terminal arrived in the country. The billionaire eventually soared, soured on the arrangement. They say he soured on the arrangement, y'all. How did he sour on the arrangement? Starlink was not, this is what Elon Musk is saying, Starlink was not meant to be involved in wars. It was so people can watch Netflix and chill and get online for school and do good peaceful things, not drones attacks and strikes. Not for that, Musk said. According to the book, he told Isaacson that he was worried that the Ukrainian attacks on Russian vessels would provoke the Kremlin into launching a nuclear war. The book titled Elon Musk will be released Tuesday. A top aide to Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky lashed out at Musk over the revelation. Oh, he just mad. He just mad because he didn't get a chance to do what he wanted to do to Russia. Elon Musk shut that down. He said he ain't being involved in wars. Y'all not going to put me in this. Okay, y'all ain't going to make them come over here and start attacking us because of what y'all are doing. Sneaking. Sneakingly trying to do something to Russia. We ain't doing that. We ain't getting involved. Well, at least Starlink is not getting involved. Even though the United States is already involved by giving Zelensky and Ukraine billions and billions and billions of dollars that we don't even know what happened to the billions and billions of dollars. Okay. The accountants ain't saying nothing. Nobody's showing us no paperwork. Nobody's showing us where the money going. You know, your taxpayers' dollars. Nobody's showing us nothing. They just doing whatever the hell they want with our money. And we just got to sit back and take it, whether you like it or not. Okay. Sit back and take it. We don't care how you feel, okay? We don't care. You just going to sit back and take it, and we're going to continue to send this money over here to Ukraine, to Zelensky. We know we don't know where it's going. We're going to continue to send the money because he got something on us, okay? We can't let it get out. We cannot. We're going to continue to send this money because we're going to build back better in Ukraine, okay? Because once they start coming after us here in the United States, you know, they start coming out to Biden, Obama, and all them. Oh, we're going to move to Ukraine, and we're going to build it back better. <laughs> that could be it, y'all. That could be it. Y'all go down in that comment section and tell me what y'all think about this whole thing. Because I'm telling y'all, it's crazy. They just might, you never know, they just might start another war. I can see it happen. Right here it said, what would happen if World War III started? A potential World War III would undoubtedly unleash an unparalleled level of suffering, suffering and devastation on a global scale. Okay, not just in the United States. A global scale. From the displacements of millions to severe food security threats, humanity would face unprecedented challenges that would strain our ca ca capacity to respond. It would be a disaster like no other. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. I just don't know when. All right? Go down in that comment section and tell me what you think about this whole darn thing right here. Do you think they're going to impeach Kamala? Do you think she's going to become the president? Do you think the Democrats and Republicans, okay, going to allow Kamala to be the president of the United States? Do you think so? <laughs> Put it on down there. I want to know. With all that being said, y'all, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click, click the next video coming up. Thank you.